Hello, my name is Jennifer Shlomovich, and I'm a vegan confidence coach. I specialize in helping vegans and aspiring vegans navigate the challenges of having a lifestyle different for the people around them. Here on my channel, The Confident Vegan, I share a variety of supportive resources, including inspiring interviews and recipe videos. Sometimes I have guests on my channel who are non-vegan who can share important information on topics that are relevant for everyone. Today, we are going to talk about a topic that is near and dear to my heart right now, which is healthy aging for women, which is my special guest, Tara Clist, who is a naturopathic nutritional therapist and a passionate advocate for health and wellness. In fact, she will probably tell you herself that she glows for a living. In her own past, Tara has overcome chronic health issues through a cleaner diet, a cleaner lifestyle, and a healthier, happier mindset. Now with the Glow Regime, Tara empowers 40 plus women to overcome their own health concerns to glow through the perimenopause, menopause, and beyond. Tara follows the principle that mind, body, and soul are interconnected and work with a full integrative approach to health, incorporating lifestyle adjustments and emotional wellness. In her previous career, Tara was an award-winning chef and her love for delicious, nutritious food remains central to her practice with a strong emphasis on a food first philosophy. Tara is also a very proud amb brand ambassador for Airborne International. And while she believes you can't out cream a bad diet, she is passionate about helping women clean up and reduce the toxic load on their body with clean skincare and self-care products. Welcome, Tara. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. It's nice to have you here. And full disclosure, I messed up my intro a couple times. So I thank you for your patience as uh, mm. <laughs> I got through all that. But you have a really uh, interesting background that I'm really excited to uh, explore more with you. Um, I, you know, I'm 45 at the time of recording this. And so I've noticed various changes. And this has been a topic I've wanted to explore more um, and have an expert on to share tips and advice because I think this can be this is a very intimidating subject for women because there's so much information on the internet and doctors have so much information and of course you should always check with your doctor about anything that you're concerned about but it's always nice to just have different um uh, different views on things so you can figure out what's right for you right because what one what what might what might work for one person may not work for another person and so mm -hmm. it's it can it can you know be a very uh, stressful time as a woman when you're trying to navigate all these differences so i'm happy to have you here thank you so um what inspired you to get in the work that you do so um as you said, I, I used to be a chef and I really, really did love it. I've always loved food, but um, I just didn't want to do it forever. Um, but I've, I'd always eaten well and really looked after my health from my late 30s anyway. Um, I don't know if you can believe it, but I had a really wild time drinking and smoking um, at university all the way through my 20s and my 30s. So I was ready to do something different. Um, and then in 2019... My 50th birthday was looming and I was just thinking about my future. Um, you know, when you think if I'm still doing the same thing in five years time, is that OK? And I just couldn't live with the slaving over a hot stove and all the antisocial hours forever. So that's when I started a business with Arban, which is a global health and wellness brand, um, a vegan global health and wellness brand, actually. And I followed um, a programme they have called the 30 Days to Healthy Living, which is a programme that's brought, based on supporting your gut health and eating a clean whole foods diet. And um, through doing that, I just had such good results. I had loads more energy, um, a flatter stomach was my favorite bit. <laughs> I have really bright eyes and much clearer skin, loads more energy. I was leaping out of bed without an alarm at 6 a.m. Um, that's when I became really fascinated in nutrition because I was just thinking, how is my body assimilating this? And, and how does it work? I really need to know. So then the pandemic hit and uh, my cooking business just stopped overnight. 
So I was really grateful then that I had already started my business with Arbon, which was also a great community because at that time it was so important, wasn't it, in lockdown. And um, then I would see really clever nutritional therapists talking all about, you know, the gut and all these things. And um, I just thought, I want to be that person. So I decided to retrain to be a nutritional therapist. Mm. And as I've been through the menopause myself, I I just, well, I hadn't at that point, but I have now, but I really wanted to help other women. So that I set up the Glow Regime, which is to help 40 plus women, 40s, 50s, 60s, beyond, just with the lead up and the whole, the whole fallout of menopause. Yeah, that's really, that's a really interesting story, how, how you were thinking about changing and then you had tried, uh, you went and signed up for Airbon, and then that led to you having an interest in nutrition and totally changing careers. It's interesting how life sometimes just unfolds into different journeys for us. You no, know, it just takes you where you need to be sometimes, doesn't it? It was perfect. Yeah. It's absolutely perfect. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I feel like when things are in aligned and they're the right thing for you, they just fall in place like they that. Do, they? they always do. They always do that, I find. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And can you share a little bit more on what nutritional therapy is? Yeah, so um, it's really the practice of encouraging really optimal health. And we can do this through looking at our diet, so our nutrition, um, and just making sure we're eating a really whole food balanced diet with lots of color in there and good variety, loads of really good variety of plant-based foods, especially. Um, it can be controversial, but I am a big fan of clever supplementation because you can plug gaps that there might be in your diet because of you know the environment, the way the world is today, um, or just the way that your body is genetically predisposed to work. So we also work with functional testing. So there are all sorts of um, <clears throat> private tests you can do to find out about your hormones, you know how they're being used, you could do a gut test to take a really deep dive into your gut microbiome and all the bacteria in there, what's going on, um, which, you know, your gut now is linked to your skin, to your brain, to your heart health, to everything. And people know that now. So then there's a DNA test that's just like reading your body's instructional man instruction manual, if you like. I'm a really big fan of this one because um, you can save yourself a lot of time and money knowing how your body uses some nutrients, what you can absorb, what you might need some extra help with that kind of thing and then um because the naturopathic part is where the lifestyle changes come in too so um we look at everything as a whole so doctors are great and they diagnose um we don't diagnose so doctors diagnose and treat the symptoms we look at the root cause so say just as an example you might go to a doctor because you've got this kind of acid reflux feeling and they will give you a tablet to help with the symptoms if you come to me i will look at it like a detective and ask well why do you have acid reflux what's going on in the body for this to happen something is not working as it should let's get to the root cause and fix that because our bodies are so intelligent our body knows what to do it's just our body's not working against us like some people seem to say that um but we're sometimes making things really tough for our bodies but they are extremely intelligent beings like supercomputers really so that's how we work with the body that's really interesting and and yeah it's that i started um uh you know uh learning more about whole food plant-based uh, eating over the past few years especially and recently uh took a uh cooking course on it because I want to teach more about that because mm -hmm. the, a lot of things, yes, there are certain things that are out of our control with our health, but uh, everything can benefit with cleaner eating. And, you know, and so there's certain things that, that are in our control that we can do to help our bodies. Mm -hmm. And, and then, and then if there's, and then the things that are out of our control, eating better is going to also help that situation as well, help with the healing, yeah. help with the symptoms. And, mm -hmm. and it's, you know, it's interesting how you mentioned, you know, how we feel like our bodies are against us. And I think part of that's frustrating because when we're younger, we can eat whatever we want, right. Usually mm -hmm. and do whatever we want. And I remember being in college, you know, 
being up late with my friends, drinking coffee at a diner to like, you know, 2 a.m., going to bed at 4 a.m., getting up at 7 a.m., going to school and being fine. Like I could not do that. Yeah. And, <laughs> um, and, and just eating junk for breakfast and, and just whatever when I was, you know, in my 20s. And um, well, that does affect people. People don't think it does affect them, but it does. It really affects yeah. your menstrual cycle that, you know, we're not supposed to have terrible menstrual cycles. People think, oh, period pain's a thing, but it's, it's not really, if you were being really, really clean, then you would have had probably an easier time. It does affect it. People just, but you can, you can certainly deal with a lot more when you're younger. That's true. Yeah. And well, then that's an interesting thing that you said is, you know, it catches up with you because how we treat our bodies when we're younger, that's also yeah. going to play a role in how our aging is going to impact us. And so I think sometimes we think, oh, my body's against me because I can't do the things I used to be able to do. <laughs> be yeah. able to do. And I think, you know, you know, mindset is so important because when we when we shift that mindset and and embrace embrace the these challenges and mm. um not look at them as challenges, but just hey, my body's going through a change, it's going through a new phase and 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 embracing all of that and then, you know, working with someone like you Mm -hmm. what, um, who can help with um, those specific areas. So working with a doctor and then a nutritionist hand in hand can really help you um, get clear yeah. on what's going on with your body. And I agree, it's so important to address something from the root cause, mm -hmm. um, you know, because if you're addressing the symptoms, um, you know, you're not fixing the challenge. And, and that challenge may not always be your challenge if you're able to get it at, at the root at the root cause the idea and, is that a doctor and a nutritional therapist work together that's the best that's the best scenario yeah it sounds like a really good um it sounds like that can really help um improve someone's health if, if they're able to connect with a nutritional therapist like you who can help address all of those things along with their doctor it sounds like a really helpful partnership and something you don't hear too much about um, at least I haven't heard too much. Like I've, I've had doctors recommend, you know, me to see a nutritionist, but you don't hear it. It's, it's, it's usually not, at least in my experience, brought up a lot to work with both like that. It's certainly, so I not, think it's certainly not here. I mean, hopefully things are getting better, but yes. Yeah. And can you share a little bit more about how aging impacts a woman's body? Um, because we it definitely, there are changes that really do happen, at least from my experience and from my friends, you start experiencing as you get into your forties and, you know, things start to go from there. <laughs> yeah. So the main thing about aging for women is menopause, isn't it? So that's, you know, not an illness per se, it's a, a, a life stage as we know, but the main thing that happens in menopause is that our estrogen just drops off a cliff. So in evolutionary terms, you know, we no longer need it. We've done our procreating, if that's what we've done, not necessarily, but that's the idea. And, and we're done, you know, but nowadays we're living so much longer. So um, a drop in estrogen affects every single system of our body because we have est estrogen receptors in every cell. So the knock-on effects, effects are really, really just huge in number. So osteoporosis, that's one of the most concerning conditions I talk about because, um, because our estrogen drops, it means that we lose our bone density. So our bones become porous. So osteo bones, por porosis, porous. And then um, we can really protect ourselves by taking regular exercise. Things like walking is good, um, especially weight bearing exercise like um, even yoga poses like chaturanga and plank pose that use our body weight are really excellent for that. But because our bones, they're not just some hard material, they're, they're living connective tissue and they are with estrogen, they're breaking down and remodeling themselves. But once, once the estrogen goes, that doesn't happen anymore. So we have to encourage this process by putting stress on the bones so that they can continue to do that and lifting heavy weights. And a two pound dumbbell is not going to do it. It might be a start, but it's not going to do much. So lifting heavy is one of the best ways to prevent osteoporosis so that when we get older, if we do have a fall or an accident, our bones don't break because they're not brittle. That's what we're aiming for. 
And this is how like so many elderly people, they end up in hospital and they don't come out because they fall over and they can't get up again. Then they go into hospital. Then maybe they get an infection and, you know, it's game over. So um, when we're in our 40s, you know, we think, oh, 80 years, being 80 is years away, but it is going to come, hopefully. So I, my aim personally is to be really fit and strong at that age and being able to do what I want. Um, and then the last thing to say about the weightlifting thing, which I'm a massive advocate for, is that women think they are going to get bulky and start to look manly if they lift weights. But this is just not going to happen because we're not physically built to do this. Um, we should weight train anyway to be strong. Not It's not just about how we look. And the same goes, I say, for losing weight. If we want to do that, we should do it to be healthy. You know, it's something that I could talk about all day, really. <laughs> no, I, I that's a really important thing that you brought up because you hear about that, but it's something that, you know, I, I haven't um, thought about too much in depth in terms of, I've been so fixated on the menopause of perimenopause yeah. that I haven't even thought about that aspect but yes it's true when 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 someone who was much older has that fall yeah their their bones are more fragile and mm -hmm. um and that's interesting what you said about weightlifting and just lifting weights and you know I love yoga um yoga I always feel good when I do it or pilates I notice when I stretch like that something I want to get back into doing um and because I know I feel, I feel better. And I, I think too, again, you know, circling back to what we were talking about with mindset, when we think about, I want to do this because I want my body to be healthy versus shaming our bodies for where they are. Mm -hmm. um, it's a different mindset. Right. And, and, and so, yeah, there, that's a great, that's a great, uh, that's a great perspective that you brought up because mm. there's, it's not just the food that we eat. It's the physical activities that we do that help our body. Yeah. And muscle waste, that's another thing um, we become prone to as we age. So that's another really good reason to keep fit. And of course, um, a good diet really, really plays into that. Stress is really important to bear in mind as we age, because um, when we are cycling females, not on bicycles, but having our... <laughs> menstrual cycles it's um our ovaries they make our sex hormones and when we go into perimenopause they basically go into retirement and our adrenal glands take over so our adrenal glands are they're responsible also for making cortisol which is our stress hormone and adrenaline and the thing to be aware of here is that the adrenals they will always prioritize making cortisol over sex hormones so if we're just running on stress all the time our body is not going to be making any sex hormones at all. It's just going to be making cortisol. So that's very, very important. So we must manage our stress and just do things like yoga, breathing to, you know, quieten our nervous system down. Um, we do make, we make loads of fewer hormones, but we, we can make still some. So it's just important to give our body the best chance we can. And then there's um, collagen production, which also just goes down i think from about age 25 it starts to decline which is terrifying so i think taking a good collagen supplement preferably one that supports our body to make its own collagen is really the best way and um people just always associate collagen with plumped up skin and that is true but it also has a lot to do with our hair growth our nails and, and healthy gut lining and bones and everything so it's more important than just it's more than skin deep that's interesting. Yeah, those are also things that I haven't thought too much <laughs> yeah. about. But yeah, that's that's really interesting. And, you know, can you share a little bit more about what the differences are between perimenopause and menopause? Yeah, sure. So perimenopause, it can start um, from leaving out really early menopause, but, you know, average in your 40s, it can start. With me, it started around the age of about 45. I started to notice um, my period started to change. Um, and I started getting all these urinary tract infections and I didn't know at the time it was perimenopause. I just thought maybe I was pregnant 
and I had um, urinary tract infections. I had no idea, but that can go on for as long as, um, as little as, you know, months to like 10 years. And then the Oh, menopause, wow. <laughs> I know, and then the menopause is just that single day which marks a year since you had your last period. So once your periods start to change, you want to be having a tracking, some kind of app. They're really good apps, aren't they, these days, that track it. And then you can you can see the changes. So that that's the day that you haven't had a period, you know, in a year. And then you are postmenopausal for the rest of your life. Wow. So I didn't know that, that it was a year from your last period. That It's is just one day, yeah. that. Wow. That just from the, that day that from the last, so that's really interesting because I wasn't sure what that defining moment was. That is a defining moment, yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's interesting. And in terms of like, what are some, you know, you shared some of the challenging symptoms that you went through during perimenopause. What are some other Uh, experiences that women could have. Oh, God, there are so many. Um, brain fog, uh, really low libido, um, just not remembering names, you know, people that you even know really well, your mind can just go completely a blank. Um, things like dry skin, like really itchy ears. There's like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of menopausal symptoms, perimenopausal symptoms, all sorts. Um, your immune system can kind of be under a lot of stress. Um, everything's just a bit harder. You just have to be more careful. It sounds like in kinder Wait to till your you're body. in the middle, just so much, so much. So it sounds like being kinder to your body and kinder to yourself. And, you know, I'm glad you brought up the brain fog because I have moments like that. Yeah. It's Oh like, my God, what's yeah. going on? And um, yeah, it's, it's, I feel like anyone who's watching this, who've, who's noticed a change in something, you know, maybe it could be related to perimenopause, something Yeah, I mean, I remember not thinking about that at all, you know, and that was only nine odd years ago. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Make him feel old. <laughs> yeah well no these are all really good things to think about because we may not be thinking about these No. types of things and if you're a woman watching and you're not in your 40s yet this is a helpful thing this is a helpful episode to watch just because it can help you be mindful of No, what certainly, you because care the way of yourself you you could you could have these earlier. I say forty, but it could be earlier. But also, the way that you go into your it's, it's really important for younger women to be watching this because the way that you go into your perimenopause really pretty much dictates the kind of perimenopause you're going to have. So I was talking about the adrenals. So if you go in stressed to the high heavens, your body won't be making any sex hormones. It'll just be making cortisol, cortisol, stress, stress, stress. So it's really important. Yeah. And that, and that can be challenging too, especially if you're going through stressful things in life, um, managing stress. I've certainly have had some challenging times in my life. And if you need, you know, it, that's when you need to give yourself what you need. If you need a therapist, there's been times I've needed a therapist to help me address processing certain, certain things in my life, which helped me then calm down my nervous system eventually, because I, I have been in fight or flight for a long time for different things until, you know, maybe the past five years. So, um, it's, it, it can be, uh, you know, it can take your time for your body to kind of get out of that and, and calm down. So therapy can help. Meditation has been helpful for me. Yeah. Just going for a walk with some walking music. in nature yeah definitely Yeah, getting out in nature. Um, if you're working at a job that's really stressful, you need to pri like figure out what can I do to take care of myself. If you're a busy mom, there's still things that you need to do. I've said this to people before who, who I work with and, and talks that I've done. It's, you know, when we go on an airplane... They say you need to put your oxygen mask on first before you can help the person sitting next to you. And as women, I think we get caught into this cycle of prioritizing everyone else's well-being over our own, and then we fall apart. But 
when we prioritize ourselves and you ask yourself, what do I need in this moment? What do I need right now? Give that to yourself and, yeah. and, and yeah. find a way because anything that you can, you know, any healthy action that you can do to help your stress, whether it's meditation, journaling, journaling has been a lifesaver for me. Gratitude. Yeah, really helpful. You know, yeah. and I think too, like meditation, meditation is such an important um, thing to incorporate in your daily routine, or even if it's a few times a week. And I think there's a lot of misconceptions on what meditation is, but you don't eat even like five minutes with my eyes closed, listening to music that I love. That yeah. can be a form of meditation, right? Because you're shutting down, you know, um, walking can be a meditation. Anything can be. If you're there, having a shower can be a meditation if you're in the shower. But how many times do we have a shower and we're not in the shower? We don't even remember having a shower. We're somewhere else. We're already halfway through our day. Um, and breathing, you know, if you have a job and you're just sitting at a desk all day, you know, just set your timer at 45 minutes, get up and walk around and do some, do a few squats. It's really, really good. Um, and just stop and breathe just for a minute, just little bits regularly. Yeah, that, I, I agree. Even even if it's like a five minute break, right? You're just getting up and, and yeah. just get up for a little walk um, or just some kind of movement. Because, yeah, I, I'm I'm in a desk all the time and, you know, staring at my computer. And sometimes I have to, like, remind myself, you know, two hours have passed and it's like, I need to get up. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's important. It's important to, and the foods that we eat can also impact stress as well. Okay. And, you know, so, um, you know, what we eat, all of these things, they connect. It's not just one thing or the other, and it's not about finding quick fixes. It's about, you know, again, what we were talking about before is focusing on doing things that are, uh, will help keep your body healthy. Yeah. And also, I just want to add too, it's not about um, being perfect either. I, I feel like, you know, progress over perfection and any little action, you can do one thing, you know, what one little, one little thing to help, you know, get things started. It could be something as much as just going for a five minute walk, you know, five, 10 minute walk, you know, during your busy day, and it's just time for yourself, any of those little actions that you can start doing just to get the ball rolling on, on changes. Mm. And what are some other challenges um, that women typically face as they get older? We, you mentioned some of them already, like osteoporosis and perimenopause and menopause. What are some other uh, challenges that women can experience as they age that they should be mindful about? Um. My mind's going a bit blank now, but um, just, you know, their diet, their nutrition, taking care of it, really, you know, making sure that you're nourishing yourself, you know, your mind, keeping your mind active, um, you know, inflammation is a massive deal, so Information is a thing that if we bang our hand, you know, it goes red, that's information that's going there to heal. But the thing is that these days people are just, have got this chronic kind of low grade inflammation. Um, they call it inflammaging. That's mm. what that people are using to describe it. So yeah, just so many, so many things like that. Does that kind of answer your question? Yeah, that does. Actually, I'm glad you brought up inflammation. I've talked about that before on my channel. And yeah, it's, um, it's, it, it can be the basis of a lot of chronic diseases if not treated. Mm -hmm. And I know for myself, um, as I've gotten older, like certain foods cause an inflammatory response in me. Like for me, that was dairy was one of those things. That's when I switched to being vegan because I first, um, I started noticing that dairy was causing skin issues in me and sinus issues. And I did this experiment for 30 days just to see how it would feel removing dairy out of my diet. 
and it made a big difference. And during that time, I was looking up dairy-free recipes, and then I found Forks Over Knives, which is a whole food plant-based uh, company, and um, just found all these other recipes of using fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds in a creative way to make delicious foods. Because I think that's the thing. We don't want to feel deprived when we're eating. But there's a lot of great things that you can eat out there um, that, you know, it's you can use it because you know what it is? It's the spices, it's the seasonings that, yeah. yeah. And so when you when you get creative with it and you can have those similar textures and um, seasonings and things, and if you use fruits instead of processed sugar to make healthy desserts, Uh, you know, tofu can be used to make a cheesecake instead of, you know, a brick of, you know, fatty cream cheese. So there's lots of different things that you can do um, to eat more plants that's not boring, that can help nourish your body more. Um, it shouldn't be about, anyway, food should never be about deprivation. That's why we talk about, um, you know, a nutritional therapist would talk with their client about adding things in before, you know, don't have that, you know? Oh, that's a nice, that's an interesting way of looking things. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit more about So if you're trying to get someone anything? off coffee, you could say, um, you know, if you try drinking more herbal tea, not all oh, don't have coffee, because someone wants their coffee. It's, you know, it's just better to offer alternatives. And then if they drink more of that, they might drink less of that. You know. I like that idea. I, yeah. I've done that before when I've had um I try to eat more fruit instead of, you know, cookies or, you know, donuts, especially when I was young, that was something I started to do. I would have an apple with a little bit of like sun butter of almond butter, a little bit of peanut butter instead of a chocolate chip cookie or, you know, something, um, you know, that I enjoyed, but was <laughs> less good for me. And by having, you know, developing a habit of eating more fruits, um, you start to crave that more too. And you say it totally changes your, your taste. But I'm, I'm really all for make, because I do have a sweet tooth. I are actually genetically predisposed to have a sweet tooth. That's my excuse. So um, I'm all for making things that, you know, with chocolate and that are much, much healthier using different ingredients to fill that kind of void, you know? I do the same thing. Like, like what's that? You just see my pancakes with loads of chocolate sauce all over them and stuff like that. Very, very good. You know what? And and you can still eat pan. In fact, I made pancakes a couple of days ago. I had a overripe banana and mm. I just used that with some um, gluten-free flour that I had and some, you know, plant-based milk. And there's things that you can do. You can still have that. Yeah, and yeah, so many yeah. And then, um, you know, I do use chocolate chips and things. So I'll make the whole base of something uh, like there's cookies I'll make where I'll either take bananas or canned pumpkin and I'll take some whole oats and I'll just mix that up oh, and I'll we sweeten to, it. We need to speed this interview up. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> this is, yeah, this is like one of my go-to things that I do and I'll use maple syrup to sweeten it. And yeah. then you just bake it in the oven and, and I'll add some chocolate chips and it's shaped like a cookie, but it's pretty much just oatmeal in a cookie form. <laughs> with a few chocolate yeah. chips in there um so there's different things that you can do i know yeah. i'm getting hungry now too uh yeah. you know but the, yeah you can still take care of that craving but just fix the ingredients to be better for your body for it so you don't have to miss out on on anything um what are some tips that you can share with others on their journey who want to experience healthier aging So I think that um, being realistic, I, I never like the term anti-aging. That's why I think it, I really like the way you phrase that question because healthy aging is the holy grail really because aging, it's a privilege, isn't it? That some don't get to experience. Yeah. So mindset is a massive part that we've talked about, um, but I work with my clients around this too. I mean, if, if you um, have so much going on, like maybe some really, really serious past trauma, um, I would say to you, have you dealt with that? Because you need to deal with that first before I'm going to start working with you. So mindset is so, so important. 
Um, and if you if you don't have a morning meditation practice, definitely, as we said, start one. And gratitude, like I said, just uh, having gratitude. I have a really loving meditation that I do, um, which is a gratitude meditation. So it kind of kills two birds with one stone because we're all busy, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> A better frame of mind and, and if you're always thinking about things that you're grateful for it just sets you in that tone for the day i think and um moving your body getting outside in the morning because our cells they can actually tell the time and this is our circadian rhythm that really mm -hmm. takes our health and um our the hormones that we make so Getting out in the morning and just getting some real light into your eyeballs, not not through a window, but actual daylight, that encourages the body to make melatonin, which is the sleep hormone. It seems counterintuitive, but it does work like that. And um, walking is just the most underrated, totally free exercise that there is. Going out for a walk in the morning, that's just a win-win. Um, people talk about habit stacking, don't they? But it's, that's like a way of getting two things in one. And then um, community and fun. It's really, really proven, isn't it, that community and a sense of purpose, they can prevent, you know, early onset dementia and all sorts of things. Um, find activities that you can do, you know, with other people that you really, really enjoy. Take up something new. Do the Wordle every day. <laughs> do you do the Wordle, Jennifer? I was doing it when it first came out and then it got harder. <laughs> and then I, I just... still doing it because I went to New York, I think I told you, and um I chatted to a couple of people on the subway. They were they were doing it and we were talking about which word do you start with? And it made for some really good conversations actually. That's such a yeah, that's fun. <laughs> you know, I haven't I I've completely forgot about I was into it for a while, but you know what? It's actually a good, it's a simple way to get your brain active right in the morning oh, and to start to think and and so maybe that's something I should get back into doing <laughs> it's, it's good. 86 now and he does he does a thing called the word wheel thing and crossword he does it every day that's great yeah it's those little things are actually big things and I like what you mentioned about walking how it can be underrated yeah. because I think there's this misconception that for something for us to be good for us we have to be like suffering in the process right like exercise if you're not like right no pain no gain you know mm -hmm. people like to say but it's true walking can you know it's movement and I think too it can be meditative it can be relaxing for the mind some mind some time that gives you some space in your mind as well it's always it's always going for a walk is never a bad decision you know and, and now here in the UK we have so much rain but I thought well this is the way it is now, especially with global warming. They just call it global raining because it's just wet much more. Um, if you've you know got the umbrella and you've got the gear, just get out there. That's what I'm yeah, doing. Yeah, absolutely. Or when, or also like on the weekends, my husband and I we like to we live near where there's a lot of hiking and walking. Mm. But here, I'm in New York State, um, not far from New York City. Um, you know, we get, we get snow and it can get really cold. And so we'll go to a shopping mall nearby and we'll just walk around. We'll try not to shop too much, but just being someplace where it's warm and it's, and at least it's getting out of the house because. Getting out of the house. There's so much to be said for getting out of the house. Yeah, absolutely. And especially when we've worked, you know, work, you know, after the pandemic, I've been working from mm -hmm. home, which is great. I enjoy it. But now I have to be more mindful of how I get out of the house because you can literally stay in the house an entire week and then all of a sudden the weekend's here and you're like, mm -hmm. oh, I haven't got, <laughs> and you're wondering why you're not feeling so great. But just getting out, of, even again, simple walk or I'll sometimes, uh, one of my self-care practices for myself is once a week at least, you know, once a week usually just going to a coffee shop with my journal or a book and I just get myself something and I'll just relax at the coffee shop for a little bit because it's getting me out of the house because when I'm home mm -hmm. I feel like I should be doing laundry I should be doing this I should be doing mm -hmm. where some when I just you know that change of environment that change of scenery 
No, can really I, be. Normally I don't, I always end up talking to someone if I go to a coffee shop, which is a good thing. Always, What's that? I always end up talking to someone if I go to a coffee shop, which is a good thing, but always making new connections, always talking to people. I think Oh, it's yeah, definitely. really good as well. Yeah, it can really, it can really, it can really help you. It can really help a lot. Um, again, just getting that engagement, you know, whatever it is, you know, and I feel like change, those little changes can, can make a difference in our lives. Because those, those little things are actually the big things and we don't realize it. Exactly. Yeah. Little things done consistently. Yeah. Well, Tara, this has been so great having you on here. Um, I feel like we could talk a lot on, on this topic because there's so many different angles with all of these things. I feel like we just scratched the surface, but I feel like um, you shared some great perspective on here that will hopefully help viewers on their journey with healthy aging. Um, before we wrap up, are, are there any uh, inspirational or supportive resources you would like to share? Um, I haven't really been very good at thinking about this, but th th um, there are some really good groups on Facebook, for example, for support. You know, if you, I think if you go somewhere where other women are experiencing the same, you might, you know, you can be more sure that you're not going mad. You know, you know, I've got really itchy ears. Oh my god, have you got that? <laughs> that kind of thing. You know what? Community is so important. Absolutely. I think, you know, I have, um, I have, uh, use meetup.com. I have a vegan community on there to support. Me. It's a really great resource as well. It's very good. It's very, very yeah. Good. You can find groups that are either virtual on there or local. Um, so you, you know, you can find a little bit of everything. If you want to meet up with people in person, if you want to do something virtually, um, to go on a meetup. um holiday to india actually Oh, wow. yeah Did that trip already happen? no i'm going in a couple of weeks luckily Oh, wow. That sounds great. I hope you have a great time. <laughs> yeah, that exactly. I I know someone who also did a cruise through a meetup and so um you can you can find great community on there and and find people who uh you know, you never know who you can meet and it's a it's a nice casual setting. Um And if you meet up with a group and, and it's not for you, that's okay. There's a whole bunch of other, Mm other -hmm. groups out yeah there. So yeah, it can be really, really helpful. Well, Tara, it's been so nice having you on here. Thank you again for stopping by. What is the best way for people to find you and connect with you? so my website is theglowregime.com i have a lovely freebie, freebie which is five ways to glow so if you just go to the bottom of my home page you can enter your details and sign up for that and um there's lots of education in there and i do a regular newsletter for my subscribers as well where i talk about all those kind of things we've been talking about lots of other stuff and um you can book a discovery call with me it's free just to talk about how i can help you more and i'm on instagram tara underscore cliss and i'm on linkedin and i have a facebook page which is the glow regime so i'm pretty easy to find i think Great. And yeah, and it sounds like your work is a great re supportive resource as well for anyone who's watching. And I'm also going to include all of Tara's links in the video notes below so you can easily connect with her. Uh, Tara, it was so nice having you on today. Thank you again for connecting with me. Thank And you, yeah. We uh, connected oh, yeah. with Instagram, didn't we? Which was great. Only recently. So, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, exactly. We found you found me on Instagram. So I'm glad you reached out. And if you ever uh, come back to New York City, I'd love to meet up and show you around. Uh, I know you did some touristy things. There's always there's there's never enough things to do, you know, never enough time to see everything in New York. I still haven't done everything in New York. So. <laughs> um, but yes, it was great having you. And thank you all for watching. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.